Hello, Sunnyside. I have a few things I'd like to share with you. And um, this time is more of a smorgasbord of information. Realize that everything that I say may not necessarily be for you, but it just might benefit somebody else. So feel free to share some of the things that I've mentioned. I want you to make sure that you, you are kept abreast of what's happening in the news. So check your newspapers and kind of hold on to magazines and things now. Just realize that many of your future textbooks are in the process now of being written with the information that's coming out. One of the things that's been in the news is the fact then that the June 7th uh, election that was held for mayor uh, between Karen Bass and Rick Caruso, well, the numbers seem to be switching a bit. At one time, it appeared that Rick Caruso, the billionaire um, real estate person, uh, was in the lead. Now that as time is going on and they're still counting uh, votes, um, it appears then that Karen Bass is in the lead. So by July 1st, we should know, okay, who came out on top with this. Okay. Other things that are in the news, and it's been quite an interesting uh, few days. Do know that you cannot sue police for not giving you your Miranda rights. Okay, you need to know about the Miranda rights. That is, um, um, you can be told, and you should be told that you may uh, remain silent and that you have a right to an attorney. Okay, so that's one of the rights then that we have had the benefit of, but the courts have kind of mocked, have kind of knocked that down. Another thing that has happened, okay, within the past uh, week or so, Sydney uh, Cam Lager. Um, presented a bill then that would bring an end to legalized forced labor for those then that are incarcerated. Now, if you're in jail, okay, um, you can't, I'm not sure how that actually works. But anyway, she was just saying then it should be illegal then for them to be forced to work. And they would receive like literally pennies on the, on the dollar. So that bill then that she presented has been voted down. Note also, Bruce's Beach in Manhattan Beach is now in the process of being returned to the Bruce family. Okay, so just kind of watch and see what's going on with that. There is a reparations um, committee that's been formed. Um, do know that they will be asking for input from the public in the coming uh, weeks or the coming months. So look up, what do we mean reparations? Who would that benefit? What is that really all about? Again, you need to know about your history. As I continue on, and again, quite a, the smorgasbord continues as I'm mixing this meal together. If you're in need of a computer, you don't have to just run out and buy one. All you really need is a library card. You can go to your local library and uh, check out a tech to go computer bundle. Now in this, you can borrow a Google Chromebook and an internet hotspot, okay? You can borrow that from the library for up to six months and then you can have access to the internet wherever you go. So check your local libraries. I know some that are not that far away from Sunnyside would be the High Park Branch that's located on um, Van Ness and Florence, okay? Um, you can check out Baldwin Hills, uh, the Westchester, uh, Loyola Branch, any number of places, but again, once, just be aware then that these are things then that are available for you. Free assistance for homeowners who are at risk of foreclosure. You may know someone who might need this information. So I'm going to just give you a telephone number for you to pass along. 
If you have any questions, you can contact Public Counsel at 213-385-2977, extension 306. Again, for Public Counsel at 213-385-2977 at extension 306. All right. Clinics are virtual every second, third, and fourth Tuesday of the month from 2 until 6 p.m. Okay. Moving right along. If you're interested in doing a backyard garden, the library there at Florence and Van Ness will be having Elliot Kahn, who is the owner and cultivator of Cottonwood Urban Farms uh, in the San Fernando Valley. You'll be coming and talking about the basic needs in order to get your garden started. Now, that will take place at 2 p.m. on July 9th, okay, at the High Park Library, which is uh, on the corner of Florence and Western, okay? So do check it out if you're interested. Once I mentioned also that the LAUSD, Los Angeles Unified School uh, District, has a Beyond the Bell program for youth development, all right? They have part-time positions available. The starting pay is $16.91 an hour, and they're looking for sports coaches, mentor coaches, and enrichment coaches, okay? The telephone number, I'm just going to give you telephone numbers this time. The number is 818-587-587. 4300. Again, 818-587-4300. So you're asking about the Beyond the Bell Youth Development Program. Okay. Note also, or do know, that there are summer reading and writing skills available at your local library and these programs are for preschoolers through those that are entering the 11th grade. So if you'd like to get an early start um, with school, okay, and again, chances are this could really be beneficial during this time. You may want to make a call then to 1-800-715-1498. And again, this is about the Summer Reading and Writing Skills Program. Call 1-800-715-1498. Okay. Quite a bit has been in the news. Quite a bit of information has been in the news. There are hearings that have been taking place regarding um, the... Capitol riots that were held on January 6th, okay? So there's a January 6th committee that's meeting. Pay attention to that, okay? This will definitely be in your history books. You might really want to also um, save some of those front pages, okay? Because later on, that in itself would become a historical document. The thing that gets me is the person the, the committee chairperson is an African-American representative from the state of Mississippi, okay? And his name uh, is Benny Thompson, Representative Benny Thompson. Okay, so interesting. You have an African-American rep, um, representative, okay, uh, in Congress then, who is in charge of the committee then that's questioning the acts um, and try to find out, well, what's behind this? The co-chair or the vice chair is uh, Representative Liz Cheney. So she is one of two Republicans that are on the committee. And the thing you need to bear in mind with that is the people who are doing the witnessing, the people who are doing the talking, these are Republicans, okay? So... They're literally just letting you know what really happened, what really took place then on January 6th. Um, And Liz Cheney is one who does not hesitate to call out the former president 
uh, about acts and deeds that she feels uh, were illegal on his part. Okay. The next hearing is scheduled um, in July. One of the last things that really was interesting was the fact then that there were two black females from uh, Georgia. They were poll workers and they were saying how they literally had to leave their homes because the former president had called their names out saying that they had done something illegal, okay, as it comes to counting the ballots. So um, the FBI told them that they thought it might be best for them to just leave until it was safe. Again, follow along with this historical um, event that's taking place in the news even now. Okay. Okay. I won't show that after all, okay, because I just discussed it. The next thing then that's interesting that's taking place in the news, the Supreme Court, okay, here it is. This is something that, um, that's very much in the news today. The Supreme Court then rejects Roe v. Wade or Roe v. Wade, okay, and that is a five to four ruling ends a half century of nationwide abortion rights, okay? There have been demonstrations, there have been protests throughout the nation as a result then of um, the Supreme Court overturning a rule that has been in effect for at least 50 years. You may really want to follow along with that. For me, the thing that I see is you're at a point now where you're really not going to end abortions. You're bringing it in to getting them done safely. So that's, that's the issue as far as I am concerned. And I think the whole idea of getting an, an abortion would really be a last resort. It's not something that I would think would be taken very lightly, okay? It would be something then that would be triggered by a tre uh, tremendous need and really an act of desperation, okay? But again, with the striking down of that ruling, again, abortions will continue. But what we can say then is they may not be continued safely or legally, okay, or under a doctor's care. So just be aware of that. As I continue, I'm going to really close out with the thing that I've been trying to get to. Okay, we've been celebrating this Juneteenth, Juneteenth uh, celebration. Let me just read something that I just wrote down um, that I copied. Juneteenth is an observant that honors the day when Union troops led by Major General Gordon Granger, arrived in Galveston, Texas, to free all those that were enslaved. This took place nearly two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed in 1863. Juneteenth marks an immediate end to, safe, to slavery and is considered the longest running African-American holiday in America. Today, it represents black liberation, uh, resilience, and excellence, um, while um, really promoting awareness and respect uh, for all cultures. Over that weekend, um, when it came into effect, really, this was the, the first year of it, um, it was the same day as June, uh, June 19th was the same day as Father's Day. Okay, so there were celebrations all over the place. And I was just really surprised at some of the things in that were not mentioned. And as a former middle school teacher, it made me wonder if people were really, if kids today think then that we we're talking about the 50 states then um, and that the message just got out uh, in Texas um, after two and a half years. Well, I was surprised that there was no mention that 
our nation was involved in a civil war. And our nation con consisted of literally some 33 states at the time. Okay? And this is really what the U.S. looked like at that time. As it turns out, it was like a war from within, a civil war. Okay? So we had the North, okay, the states in the North, that was the Union, and the Southern states, okay? The Southern states were known as the Confederacy. There were two presidents at the time. We had the president of the North, who was Abraham Lincoln, okay? And the president of the South, of the Confederacy then, and that was Jefferson Davis, okay? The vice president of the South, I think, was Alexander Stevens, and he was the one that said, well, this is called the war between the states. That was a, um, a term that he really coined. Okay, and the issue tended to be states' rights. The southern states, the Confederacy, felt then that it was their right then to have slave, to have slave labor. And at the same time, you have the North um, saying then that... Um, Hmm, we wonder if that is the way it should be. So as I looked through one of the textbooks that was used here, it was, uh, be aware then that the Civil War took place between 18, was it 1861 and 1865. And they were like at the midpoint and the North was kind of getting tired of fighting. The South was also trying to get tired of fighting. So Lincoln then, okay, the president of the Union, felt then that he really needed to come up with something to really get this thing going so they could just end it. So let me share some of the things then that I've shared with kids over time, okay? He was serious about really saving the Union, but now he took a firm stand on slavery as well. Lincoln, if he linked the union with the abolition of slavery in the South, it would strengthen his support in the North by pointing out the need to protect the country and to make our country where freedom uh, is of great value. So on September the 22nd, 1862, okay, the war had been going on for some time, he issued his first Emancipation Proclamation. Now, emancipation is the act of free. The Emancipation Proclamation would free all, now listen to this, would free all slaves still in rebellion. All slaves in areas that were still in rebellion. It was a statement of intent instead of the law, and slaveholders refused to accept it. But the proclamation caused many people to realize that along with moral reasons, there were other good reasons, too, for freeing the four million slaves in the, Confeder in the Confederacy. Emancipation would take away the South's major source of labor, and it would give Union forces, the North, a new source of troops. This is the thing. Listen. The proclamation did not affect slaveholders in the Union nor in parts of the Confederacy in Union hands. However, it would become effective in regions that remain rebellious, okay, on January 1st, 1863, okay? That year is important, January 1st, 1863. When the uh, Confederacy failed to agree, Lincoln signed a second proclamation on New Year's Day. Many blacks, okay, we heard about it, okay, we had our way of getting some, getting information. Many blacks took advantage of the proclamation and other Union anti-slavery policies to go to Union lines and to freedom. So many people then, okay, they realized, hey, okay, now's the time to get up and go. The way I used to explain it to my kids were, and again, it said the proclamation did not affect slaveholders in the Union, nor in parts of the Confederacy that were already in Union hands. 
the way I would explain it to my kids was I would tell them, I'm going to give an A to all of the students in Miss Daniels' class, in Mr. Franklin's class, and in Miss Francois' class. All those kids are going to get A. And then they would ask, well, well, what about us? And I said, well, you just keep working. You know, you, you can earn yours. Okay. So to me, that's the way this document was. It was really kind of a mental thing. Okay. Because when the slaves heard that, and some really did get the information immediately, okay, they realized that, hey, it's worth me trying to risk my life, okay, to get away um, yeah, and be free. Okay. I brought a timeline with you that made me wonder, what is this whole thing about critical race theory, too? Okay. I brought a timeline to kind of emphasize some of the things that I'm sharing to just let you know, it's just not me talking off the top of my head, but let me start with this one. Okay. History lesson. African slaves are brought to America. I'm going to start here with that one. Okay. But enslaved Africans were forced to work on huge colonial farms called plantations. The black workers had no freedom and no rights. Their owners thought of them as property, not people. But the enslaved Africans were people. Hey, you're talking about us. Uh, they wanted freedom and rights. So the one thing that we tend to hear about is the year 1619. Okay, 1619, the first African slaves arrived in Jamestown. Okay, that's Virginia, okay, one of the original 13 colonies. Okay, it goes on to point out some things. 1778, okay. 1793, Congress passes a law that makes it illegal to help escaping slaves, to help escaping slaves. Then I think about what's happening now. And again, history has a way of repeating itself. You're hearing these things about, oh, some people were saying, well, if you can't get an abortion in one state, maybe you can go to another one. But then, too, there is talk about well, if you hear of your neighbor that's getting ready to have an abortion, okay, turn that information in, okay? To me, it kind of seems like history repeating itself, okay? 1808, slave trade became, uh, becomes illegal. All right. 1808, that means bringing in slaves from other countries, from other countries becomes illegal. All right? 1808. This goes on now, 1820, Missouri Compromise divides the states into free and slave. Okay, remember, we were talking about um, during the time then, the, um, this is pre-Civil War, pre-Civil War, okay? The Missouri Compromise. There was a thing called the Underground Railroad. And when, you when kids hear that term, they probably think in terms of a Railroad going up under the ground, okay? Actually, it meant shh, hush, hush, okay? So you're seeing the different passages out of the South, out of the areas then that were enslaved, and people would really um, go, they would escape quietly, secretly, okay? And they really didn't feel safe until they actually got um, into Canada in many instances, because as I read from the text earlier, again, that there were, um, you know, that you, you, you still could be enslaved in some <clears throat> areas of the North. 1850, Fugitive Slave Law says that all persons must help catch escaped slaves. Okay? Think about the laws that they're trying to institute now. Okay? Okay. Does that sound familiar? It does to me. 1852, again, pre um, the Civil War, the book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, okay, talks about the evils of slavery. And that was a book then that was written by Harriet Beecher Stowe, okay, Harriet Beecher Stowe. And as people started reading, they realized, wait a minute, this is the way people were treated. These are the conditions. This is what was happening, okay. 1857. The year 1857, the Supreme Court, okay, and today 
people often say, mm, the extreme court. The Supreme Court rules that slaves are property. They're not people, okay? Part of our history, people, be aware of that. In 1857, we were considered just property, not people. Okay, 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation frees Southern slaves, okay? The war between the states, the war was going on, all right? Now, your actual freedom did not come until the close then of the Civil War. And that was through um, the 13th Amendment, okay? The fourth, th really, the 13th Amendment and the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, okay? That was in 1866. All right. In closing, then, when I hear the term Juneteenth, it just makes me wonder if people really realize that Abraham Lincoln was saying, okay, now, he's the president of the North, and he is freeing those then that were enslaved in the South, where there is another president. Was it a psych job? Have you heard this before? You may want to go back now and just do a bit more reading about our history. Our history truly is fascinating. And the more you hear, okay, um, the more you might want to um, in inquire even more. Again, Juneteenth, as we celebrate Juneteenth holidays. It's not over. It's not over. The pandemic, okay, the numbers are rising in different states. So again, do what is in your best interest. If you're the only one wearing a mask, again, Wear your mask, do what is in your best interest, and encourage others to do the same. God bless you.